In this video, we will use the partition function we derived in the previous video to calculate the average energy and elongation of the chain and weight. When we say average, we mean averaged over the dynamics by which the world explores the configurations that it can access. We can use the partition function to calculate the average energy of the system by taking the derivative of the natural logarithm of the partition function as mentioned in the previous slide deck. Upon substituting z explicitly into this equation, recall that a power within a logarithm can be moved in front of the logarithm. In this case, we choose to hold the power n constant as we consider different baths and thus temperatures tau. Thus, n is a constant for the purposes of differentiation and can move all the way out in front to the left. To take the derivative of a natural logarithm, we push the stuff that is inside the logarithm downstairs into the denominator. We then take the derivative of the stuff inside. Because we are doing derivatives on exponential functions, we get exponentials back, along with derivatives of the stuff in the exponents. Because the temperature tau appears as a single power in denominators, applying the power rule of differentiation spits out a multiplicative factor of negative 1. This is why the first term has a negative sign and the second term has a positive sign. These powers of tau squared cancel. Factoring out a negative sign, the expectation value of the energy thus reads minus n f e to the f over tau minus e to the minus f over tau, all of that over e to the f over tau plus e to the minus f over tau. The average energy we have calculated is the average of the expression we initially used to describe the energy of our system in terms of the downward extension of the chain, meaning the downward displacement of the weight from the nail. Holding the force capital F constant as the world explores its accessible configurations allows us to pull the F out of the averaging brackets. The negative signs and Fs on both sides cancel. So, the average of the downward displacement of the weight, that's bracket R, and in this case we are normalizing by the maximum length of the chain capital N, equals a quotient, e to the f over tau minus e to the minus f over tau, all of that over e to the f over tau plus e to the minus f over tau. To tidy up notation, we will refer to the normalized elongation as y, and we will use x to refer to the ratio of the force capital F to the temperature tau. The ratio F over tau parametrizes the importance of energy transfer from the system to bath for increasing the number of ways in which the bath can be found. A bigger force F means a larger energy transfer to the bath when a link in the chain is lifted, which means, all else equal, a greater multiplicative increase in the number of ways to find the bath arranged. A bigger temperature means, for a given energy transfer, less of an increase in the number of ways to find the bath. y equals e to the x minus e to the minus x over e to the x plus e to the minus x. We will analyze this function to provide a visual representation. What is the value of y evaluated at x equals 0? Substitute zeros every place we find x. e to the 0 is 1. The two copies of 1 in the numerator cancel each other out, while the two copies in the denominator add to give 2. 0 over 2 is 0, so y evaluated at x equals 0 is itself 0. This coordinate pair corresponds to the origin of the xy plane. Because y at 0 equals 0, the origin may be a so-called zero crossing of y on x. Let us show that the origin is, in fact, a place through which the plot of y on x changes sign. If x is less than 0, then e to the x is the exponential of a negative number and e to the minus x is the exponential of a positive number. The exponential of a negative number is smaller than the exponential of a positive number, so the second term in the numerator wins, and y on x is less than 0 when x is less than 0. If x is greater than 0, then e to the x is the exponential of a positive number, while e to the minus x is the exponential of a negative number. The exponential of a positive number is bigger than the exponential of a negative number, so this time the first term in the numerator wins, and y on x is greater than 0 when x is greater than 0.
What are the slopes of the plot of y on x? We calculate the derivative dy dx. This means taking the derivative of the quotient that describes y. Derivative of the top, remember that a negative sign inside an exponent gets kicked out as a multiplicative factor upon differentiation, times bottom, minus top, times derivative of the bottom, again remembering to kick out a multiplicative factor of negative 1 when differentiating an exponential that has a negative factor in the exponent, and divide by bottom squared. These negative factors together give a plus. And this combination of a negative factor and an addition sign together give a minus sign. We have pairs of terms upstairs, in other words, a difference of squares. The first term in the numerator is the same as the denominator, so we can divide to get 1. The other part of the numerator along with the denominator can be expressed as the square of a quotient, namely the quotient that equals y. The derivative dy dx equals 1 minus y squared. Evaluated at x equals 0, we obtain 1 minus the square of y at 0. As we have already shown, and as is illustrated on the graph, y on 0 is itself 0, so the slope is 1 minus 0 equals 1. For every unit of run to the right, we get a unit of rise toward the top. The plot of y on x is increasing with slope 1, meaning pointing precisely from southwest to northeast as it passes through the origin. We will show that the plot of y on x is actually everywhere increasing. The quantity y squared has the general form of a quotient with the square of a difference between a first real positive number a and a second real positive number b on top and with the square of the sum of the same positive numbers a and b below. Foiling, meaning multiplying distributively, gives a squared minus 2ab plus b squared upstairs and a squared plus 2ab plus b squared downstairs. The denominator is a positive number because it is a square of a sum of two real positive numbers, so it corresponds to a point on the number line to the right of the origin. The numerator is a non-negative number because it is a square of a real number, so it corresponds to a position on the number line, either precisely coincident with or displaced to the right of the origin. Because of the subtraction of 2ab upstairs as distinguished from the addition of 2ab downstairs, the numerator is a lesser number than the denominator, and so the marker for the numerator should be placed to the left of the marker for the denominator. Because the numerator is a lesser non-negative number than the positive denominator, the magnitude of the numerator is smaller than the magnitude of the denominator, and the ratio of the numerator over the denominator is less than 1. y squared is less than 1. Substituting into the expression for the slope, 1 minus y squared turns into 1 minus a non-negative quantity less than 1. 1 minus a non-negative quantity less than 1 is greater than 0. Because the value of x has been arbitrary during the deduction of the inequalities on this slide, the inequality dy dx greater than 0 is true for all real values of x. The slope of y on x is everywhere positive, meaning the plot of y on x is everywhere increasing. What is the curvature of the plot of y on x? To address this question, we calculate the second derivative d squared y dx squared which means taking the derivative of the derivative of y, meaning of 1 minus y squared. The derivative of the constant 1 is just 0, and taking the derivative of y squared means bringing down the power of 2, dropping the power of y from 2 to 1, and multiplying, according to the chain rule, by the derivative of y with respect to x. We determined that dy dx is 1 minus y squared, which we just found was everywhere positive. The leading constant factor of minus 2 is everywhere negative. We have shown that the factor of y, sandwiched in the middle, takes negative values when x is less than 0, takes the value 0 when x equals 0, 
and then takes positive values when x is greater than 0. Multiplying these factors together, we find that the second derivative, d squared y dx squared, takes on positive values when x is less than 0, takes on the value 0 when x is 0, and it takes on negative values when x is greater than 0. The signs of d squared y dx squared and of y are flipped because of the constant negative factor of minus 2 out front. Positive values of the second derivative when x is less than 0 correspond to upward curvature in this region. The value of the second derivative is 0 at the origin, meaning that the plot of y on x momentarily has no curvature here. And negative values of the second derivative for x is greater than 0 correspond to downward curvature in that region. Finally, we look at the behavior of y on x for arbitrarily positive and arbitrarily negative values of x. Does a limit exist for y as x becomes arbitrarily positive? Divide numerator and denominator by a factor of e to the x to reveal exponentials that become arbitrarily small in magnitude relative to unity as x takes on arbitrarily large positive values. The quotient becomes arbitrarily close to the ratio 1 over 1, so the limit, as x goes to positive infinity, of y on x exists, and it is plus 1. Does a limit exist for y as x becomes arbitrarily negative? Multiply numerator and denominator by e to the x to reveal exponentials that become arbitrarily small in magnitude relative to unity as x takes on arbitrarily large negative values. The quotient becomes arbitrarily close to the ratio negative 1 over 1, so the limit as x goes to minus infinity of y on x exists, and it is negative 1. Using the properties we have deduced allows us to trace out the plot of y versus x. When x is a large positive number, meaning when the force capital F is large relative to the temperature tau, Transferring energy out of the system, consisting of the chain and weight, to the bath increases the number of ways that the bath can be found by an overwhelming factor. The squishy word overwhelming means that it is basically impossible to find the chain in any configuration except the one illustrated, where it is fully extended downward. The plot saturates and reaches the horizontal asymptote y equals plus 1 because it is impossible for the chain to be any more than fully extended downward. Even when x is closer to unity, meaning the force capital F and temperature tau are more similar in magnitude, there can still be some tendency to extend the chain downward so as to make energy available to the bath, where energy can allow the bath to arrange itself in various states. In this cartoon we are illustrating a smaller weight. This means that lifting the weight is not as productive in transferring energy to the bath, thus not as productive in increasing the number of ways to arrange the bath, and thus not as productive in increasing the number of configurations in which to find the world, as compared to the previous situation in which the weight was large. With a lighter weight, the configurations that the world explores now include with greater representation a variety of examples in which the chain is crumpled and the weight is lifted. In these illustrations, the weight is simply lifted higher, closer to the nail, than in the example with the biggest weight. However, it is not out of the question occasionally to find the weight displaced even above the nail. The presence of a weight biases the average length of the chain so that on average it extends downward. However, when the force F and temperature tau are of similar magnitude, the chain will not on average be fully extended. If there is no weight, then no energy is transferred between the system and bath as the links of the chain flop around. There is no bias to tend to extend the chain downward. Among the configurations that the world explores, states of the chain extending above and below the nail are represented, in a sense, equally so that the average extension of the chain from the nail is zero. Using buoyant balloons of different sizes produces a mirror image on the left, in a sense, of the situations we have explored using weights on the right. As a consequence of the way we have written the Hamiltonian of the chain and weight, 
A buoyant balloon that corresponds to decreased system energy as the chain extends upward is represented by negative values of the force capital F, whereas a weight that corresponds to decreased system energy as the chain extends downward is represented by positive values of the force capital F. In this slide, we have spoken as though changes in the average position of the free end of the chain result from adjusting the size of the weight or buoyant balloon in the context of a given bath. The viewer may wish to sketch a similar diagram describing another way to explore values of x. In this alternative situation, the weight is kept constant, but the bath, and thus temperature tau, change. In this slide deck, we have calculated the average position of the free end of a chain fixed at one end. When we say average, we mean an average calculated by tracking the states of the chain as the overall world consisting of the chain and a large bath equally explores its accessible configurations. We performed this calculation using the partition function. The model of the ideal chain can be used as a starting point for understanding properties of polymers in biological systems.